I'm humbled uh, to be able to attend this uh, uh, conference. And I'm, I feel so, so, so happy that I, even with all the friends and the colleagues who are now online, this hall still looks full, even with all the COVID uh, uh, protocols that we are taken. And thank you very much indeed. One of the reasons I came here is because I've attended more KD meetings than, than I'm likely to attend in future. There are fewer. Uh, however, talking maybe the last point, we really haven't uh, discovered anything since the last talk a few minutes ago by Professor Munyao, Josiah, Lisila, and all the beautiful speakers that we have had. However, at the end of the, uh, the presentation, I'm hoping that we come as a, out as a group, decided that we go forward, and like I said earlier on, that we put our country, our region, which we have actually pioneered on the map because there are a number of things that uh, have come. At the end of it, most of the things, of course, I'm saying, I see the reviews done by Professor Dr. Gakuru, are actually from the recent guidelines. But knowing where we come from, knowing where we are practicing, and many people here are practicing maybe solo or maybe in uh, county referral hospitals, the level fives, we know that there are great difficulties. Great difficulties that you personally, individually, might not be able to attend. But I hope the association and all other colleagues, we can actually make a way forward like we have attempted in the past. Um, you see, the talk today is thoracic disease. This is going to be a paradigm shift that instead of just talking about psoriasis, we are talking about psoriatic disease. And simply because of all the things that have been mentioned by all the colleagues uh, and past presenters, because this underlines about the complexity of this uh, problem. Others may say it is a syndrome, but uh, I, I think ideally, if we define it like that, it will be easier. Ah, it is chronic, immune mediated, like all the presenters have said, it is inflammatory and affects actually most of the organ systems in the, in the body. That is not new. However, since 2017, uh, 2014, uh, when we had the first uh, Sorensis Global Report, which we have discussed several in our meetings, where now Sorensis was actually labeled as a non communicable disease among others like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, mental illness, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it is important that uh, whatever treatments we are thinking about are pathogenically based. That means the basis of the treatment we are proposing is based on what is the perceived pathogenesis. However, saying uh, that, there's a caveat. Because what really triggers the immune system, that yet has not been found. And that yet is going to be found. It is important, and somebody, one of the speakers mentioned, that there has to be long-term management. Patients will move from one clinician to another and they are looking for quick fixes. This should not be the case. It is important to like, capture that. But having said that, it's also important to know that, ideally, like I said earlier, Lord, you don't have much time. If you are sitting in a, in a clinic, for example, say the, the clinic, I was very familiar with the clinic number 17 or 23, and there are six of you, and you have maybe 70 patients to see, you can handle it, spend a lot of time. For example, say, and of course we give examples where we know work has been done. In the US, as a dermatology consultant, you are actually only allowed maybe about seven minutes. 
You put a clock, seven minutes are over. By that time, you have assessed the patient, you've taken the history, you have examined, and you have even written treatment. Is that possible? It is not. But the minute are uh, the times when uh, you have uh, a key waiting, and the patient says, actually, a key, even before they, get, they, get, they sit, um, I've waited too long. But when they sit down, they are going on for an hour without even realizing. Okay? So these are uh, instances that we, we know we are in, and we apologize for this. But we have uh, where there are challenges there, of course, opportunities and uh, solutions. This is where we talked about uh, referring these patients to patient groups which have more time. And we have uh, maybe, maybe many of our doctors in KD also in those groups and they facilitate these meetings. So credible information is given. We do not allow people who come over and you know, sell things in them also, okay? May that we allow that a patient moves from uh, Dr. So-and-so to Dr. So-and-so. Because basically, as I said, we need one to uniformize or make uniform management so that the patient is comfortable when they are seeing you, when they are seeing somebody else. And you can, they can tell you that when I was seeing so-and-so, I was told I had psoriasis and this is the treatment I was given. But many of the patients will come over and want to trick you Okay, that, that doctor gave me this, never told me what I have. But do you believe that, Lily? Please don't. But uh, many times, of course, we are at fault because we are quick. You make your life by seeing numbers, obviously. But that patient to whom you make a difference is the one that will matter when you have retired. Uh, I mean, retired for the day, not for the, from the profession yet. Okay? Because you, you, need, you need to feel comfortable about it. Uh, retirement, of course, is a, uh, maybe still fall off. If you have passion and you like what you are doing, you continue doing it until you are able to do it. Now, obviously, there's still a great need uh, for searching new and safe tools to use. I'm talking about tools of management. Yesterday, we had a, a beautiful presentation uh, from the nurse practitioner that even as clinicians, we need to consider other people. And these people are actually spending more time with the patient than many times uh, where we do. And they can have that additive role of reinforcing the things that you have said, the things you have suggested, uh, we hope maybe the association KD will develop a patient pamphlet. Patient pamphlets that tell. Well, obviously, health research is an issue. I mentioned about Dr. Gugu, who is uh, also very, very familiar and sometimes acts in contravention to the known practice that we have. But you do not even know what sites or what are the previous was. Both sexes will be involved. This all had been said before. There are important uh, references right at the bottom there that uh, are good to know. And uh, this is going to be passed off, uh, obviously. Psoriasis does occur in children. It's not rare. So it's not it maybe may fair to say that uh, probably uh, under 40 and beyond 40. No, no, no. We are seeing it even actually in the psoriasis association of Kenya. We, we have uh, parents who are coming with babies of six, seven. Fortunately, we've been in, uh, you know, uh, the association has lived, and some of them have transitioned into adulthood. And they are some of our best uh, advocates. So it is important. The classification has gone into detail. This is not going to change because it's morphology based. And also maybe the classification also may be location-based. These are clinical guidelines. Clinical guidelines that you tell you when you see, when you describe this, and somebody else describes it, then you are actually talking about the same thing. That's the purpose of describing something. Otherwise, if you see it and you are the only one who will see, you can basically maybe rely on your memory or whatever. 
but we need to make sure that uh, other people know what you are talking about. Some, of course, uh, some of them are rare. Uh, Pustra psoriasis is, is, is rare. But uh, there are three drugs, actually one approved uh, just maybe last week by FDA. But it is actually passed as a rare disease because that is a route where you are not required to make a lot of um, um, randomized clinical trials. And that is something that the drug companies use. Uh, for us actually to have a big conference of psoriasis, it tells you that psoriasis is so, so, so important. Among the big pharma, big pharma, you know, probably not what we are seeing here uh, uh, in our exhibitions, the people who make big money, big money, are insurances, and insurances with uh, other comorbidities. So when you attend these conferences, psoriasis itself, particularly the, the non-biologic uh, treatments, are probably put aside in the posters and where we present, because we present clinical material, not necessarily uh, research-based. This slide has been uh, passed on many, many times, but it's good that you, you, you know. At the corner of the slide, you will see that uh, before we were being told that trans is a disorder of keratinization, blah, 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 the thing of course has changed because you are now involving the dritic cells, you are involving the macrophages. And now we have the cytokines, the cytokines. And we are, we are talking about the uh, uh, tumor necrosis factor, interleukin things. If you are in a small practice in a Kilifi or Homambi or whatever, or maybe not even that far, even a level five hospital, talking about these things is nice. But is it realistic? I think the fact is it isn't. However, we must know when we started practicing, isotretinoin was something that was used like far away. We talked about it. When we are doing postgrad, that's the time we are doing clinical trials. It was being passed by FDA several years later. But now we have it. We have it even as in generics. Of course, like uh, my good friend uh, from Egerton mentioned, the age of, uh, say, from the original drug of 16,000, 17,000 to 5,000, it's big. Even 5,000 shillings a month is big for treatment. And when you send the patient to a, to a pharmacy, they have to get a, an authorization from the insurance or even from NHIF. So th these are hindrances. Now, having looked at, uh, you can't see it so well when you are there, but uh, these are going to be sent to you. If you have a smartphone, you can actually expand these things. Because the first box, which you can't see very well here, except uh, maybe when you come from this close, talks about the tumor necrosis factor. We have them in this country, but obviously, like many have said, they have, we have limited access simply because of cost. The other thing is uh, not actually just cost. Actually, there's a uh, limited knowledge. And uh, actually, um, among us, because many of us are not actually very, very, very uh, convinced or keen to use them, simply because maybe uh, we don't have uh, enough um, support on that case, and uh, as maybe one of the questions that came earlier alone is that we should actually arrange symposia for such things, particularly because even if you are not going to use this, these are things that may come very, very close to you. Uh, so we we'll talk about the non-biologics very, very quickly. The clinical burden of disease here, and this is where maybe we come in also. It is a uh, systemic disease. In the US, it affects more than 8 million people. What about Kenya? The last systemic study was done in Kenya way back in uh, 69, 70. By one of our lecturers is long gone. 
And we need now that we have representation virtually in most uh, uh, parts of the country to make a multi-centric review of psoriasis so that we can now put it on the map. It's so embarrassing to hear that somebody, a tourist has come over Masai Mara, then takes uh, two days off. You probably might know that friend. And go does a survey of a, a village in Masai Lad, and then says, actually, Sarazi does not exist in Africans. And you know, you are, you are ashamed because you people are seeing Sarazi every day. And Sarazi is from coast to the lake, from seaside to the mountain, and in between. Because the spectrum we have of, uh, I think, two hot up groups of patients and clean, uh, clinicians, we have close to 300. We have had meetings in, in Nakuru, in Kisumu, in Nyeri, in Mombasa, and there are patients there. But we need to tell the world about that. Uh, I, I will probably talk about that so that we see the roles that we play uh, ourselves here. Now, one of the problems you saw about a classification, they're saying that classification is the one that uh, enables you to plan treatment. That's a very good. It's good on paper, it's good on research. However, we were also reminded, I think this morning or yesterday, I think this morning, the palm is 1% of the body. But for a surgeon I'm treating with the palm, and some two fingers on the left, he's disabled. He can scrap, he can operate. He's absolutely disabled. And he has had a, a training in surgery, so he can do that up. So it's actually not the percentage. It's also the perception of the patient and also how you can relate to, to that uh, patient yourselves. So extensive involvement of even some small parts of the body if you had a uh, genital psoriasis, yeah, I'm sorry. There can be total disability, isn't it? And break up of a relation because many people think that is uh, an STD. They think it's AIDS. And the patient who see you will probably have had the AIDS test many times and they are told it is a negative. It's a negative. They had had treatments for syphilis several but of course it's not going anywhere uh i think it is important also that we notice some of those things the risk factors have been very well described by the past speaker uh but i think what is important that we underline is uh, the psycho emotional well-being but here is a fixed it's not the psychology of the patient who is disabled. It's actually psoriasis that makes it. If we talked about the uh, cytokines that we talk about in the inflammatory process, and they are actually generalized, so they are actually having an uh, effect in the endothelial cells of the whole vasculature, then it is not surprising that uh, there will be a psychological or even an emotional um, disability. Uh, being. It is now well documented that uh, suicide, uh, suicide ideation is actually pretty common. In the Philippines, actually, we have had many, many deaths. And being at uh, the international level, we come to hear these uh, reports every now and then. So what is the crux of the matter? It's early diagnosis. And uh, early diagnosis can be made everywhere. Whatever, whatever clinic you are in. And uh, I will not emphasize that you have to do a diagnosis. Uh, I mean, um, a biopsy. Waiting to do uh, a diagnosis biopsy, I think is uh, an overkill. There has to be, and I like uh, Dr. Kiplono's uh, message that you have to call it the clinical picture with the histology, okay? It's so, 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 so important. Yeah, there are many diseases that you present with the parakeratosis, even acanthosis. 
what may not probably have a probably just a eosinophils. But there are also other diseases that may appear like that. And if you consider how much is about it, is that something that we are routinely doing in every clinic? No. And even where it is being done, we don't have a Kiprono there. Because one of the effects, and this is something that we have discussed a lot, is that uh, histological support uh, is important, but is largely actually not present. We do respect to our pathologists, they are very good. But you know, dermatopathology is not, uh, it's, it's a rather specialized thing. And the best dermatopathology is the one who is already a clinician because he can coordinate it. But if you look, and I have had a look at uh, labs, the clinical detail will give uh, in those lab requests, uh, you know, skin disease is a diagnosis, and then you, you said some biopsy. You know, so the size and site of the biopsy is also terribly important. I think Dr. Kiplono um, has addressed that uh, earlier on. Early diagnosis. And then maybe more importantly, what are the expectations of patient? Where you've been sitting, and I will not use more time also, is that uh, the patient comes in an expectation and you have to address that expectation. Many have come over thinking that they, they, they will get a cure. They can't cure them, but you can manage them and help them to manage their lives and whatever. The other thing, of course, we have probably overlooked are the carers, the husbands, the wives, the parents. They are a neat and grow part of the management of the patients. What is the view of the health carers? You know, we were told uh, here that uh, there are people who see skin disease and say, mm -mm. no, no, that's not mine. Send it over to the, to the other person who sees those type of things. So we need also to have a, a knowledge, skill transfer among all healthcare workers. It's, it's a, I think it's important. Very, very quickly, many and are the same. Um, I don't think it is fair to say that steroids are out or steroids are contraindicated. Uh, we know very well Guns are contraindicated in, uh, in any country, including Kenya, but they are licensed, isn't it? In the proper hands, they are very useful, they are protective, but in the body survey hands, they can be very, very dangerous. Now, uh, the systemic ones are the ones that are, I think we need to probably just spend a little bit of time here because this is something that is uh, not fully utilized. It's available, not so expensive. And uh, the action can be used even in uh, some of the uh, centers. However, when you are going this way, then you must be certain that you have uh, actually performed all the tests because you go to the pharmacy, like I said, and they are told we are using cancer drugs. What cancer do you have? And you have, you have that and you have a conflict already. Uh, what is commonly available is a metric set with all the concerns that have been expressed. I will not repeat that. Cyclosporin, cyclosporin you are pretty fast, uh, faster than metric set. Metric set may, may be um, uh, more than a month. Acetretin actually is, a, is better than isotretinoin, but isotretinoin is much cheaper and commonly available but with the, all the monitors that we need to do. I haven't used a uh, few minutes. They are very much available in Germany and uh, part of Europe. As a far print, I do not know who has used it, but this is something that you see. I put a primer last, last year, but it is something that uh, we are doing studies here in this country. It's a Nolo tablet, 30 milligrams uh, twice a day. It's effective. Patients will look for something which is convenient and fast and it will be available hopefully very soon through one of our, our persons. These are the non-biologics. 
And these are things, good monitoring you can do. Obviously, they are cautioned. If someone has generalized infection, they are cautious. If they have um, comorbidities, that is where you go. Because comorbidities actually reduce, they do not just actually increase morbidity, but they actually reduce the longevity. Uh, in our July, June, July meeting, we honored uh, Neil Meta and Joe Gelford. These are familiar names to the people who know about psoriasis, who have pioneered work on uh, the vasculature in the body and actually indicating that psoriasis actually involves the whole body vasculature. And we had a live, uh, live uh, uh, lectures from them. This will be available, hopefully, like uh, somebody asked uh, in one of the questions that was sent, that we could have focus sessions just to deal with these, with these things. So a primalist looks like his fellow, but we'll soon get it and it'll be available. Now, obviously, when you are talking about uh, uh, other things here, yeah, we are talking about, uh, and uh, Professor Miao has gone into this, Dr. Kalkuru has gone into this, the American Academy of Dermatology Recommendations. Um, somebody with uh, psoriatic arthritis, uh, they have to get a, a systemic uh, uh, treatment. We have the ones that we have, the ones that are available, if you monitor them, if you um, do the light investigations. The classification of whether moderate or severe is actually with you and the patient. This surgeon that we have, we are using a biologic at, at great cost to him, but he's going to turn around, okay? and be able to, to work. So you have the topical agents, UVB, but you know actually during this COVID, how many are able actually to travel for, um, for the therapy? It requires so many sessions, you need one week or whatever. It is costly, whether somebody is using the bus fare or whether they are driving or whether somebody is paying for them. Biologics are useful. Uh, I think um, what I want to underline here is that uh, we have, uh, we, we need to involve other people than uh, just ourselves. We have the dermatologists, we have the primary healthcare workers that actually many uh, of us here are all, and you have the nurse that coordinate some of these things. Some of those patients will be referred for endocrinology workup. They have maybe diabetes or they have other illnesses, gastro. If they have um, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and as somebody did say, biologics are actually not absolutely contraindicated in IBD. Actually, that might be one of the pivotal indications. Ophthalmologists, how many ophthalmologists uh, would diagnose the uh, psoriasis? It is asked to do that. The cardiologists, fortunately, we work in a team, but how many of us have referred patients to psychiatrists because of psoriasis? I think what we not need to talk here maybe are the psychologists because we need to have them address chronic illness or chronic disease, how to manage that. And of course, uh, rheumatologists. All this, the patient is at the center. So we are all being uh, patient-centric. Uh, so co collaborative care in uh, uh, psoriasis is important. Uh, many of these uh, you know, clinicians that have referred may not actually be very, very, very uh, vast with the dermatological problems. However, at the bottom, when you say that there are progress in treatment options, is a considerable care uh, variation. Difference because of the way we are positioned, but you can still make a uh, way of that. Uh, I think the most important thing here is uh, knowledge and skill. Knowledge you can get, you can get that even from the journals, from the needs that we are having. We can also read and transmit. But then we need to develop another skill, another skill of how to 
uh, get a rapport quickly with the patient, and also a rapport also to be able to interact with our colleagues also. That's so, so, so important because that way then you make the life a little bit better. So, suboptimal disease uh, care is uh, what we are seeing. We need to be a little bit more holistic. Uh, patient and physician uh, agreement regarding psoriasis severity assessment. The treatment goals are extremely important and uh, improving the care with training and communication skills. More importantly, patient education, disease training. Uh, we'll hopefully participate in these things. I'm just finishing up. We have the, uh, the Global Psoriasis Atlas that I have addressed K, K, KD severally, where we are forming, I think some of you may be familiar with the diabetic atlas. It's something that comes up every, five, every few years. This is a mapping of the, of the epidemiology, of the management tools, of the treatment that are available around. And we can uh, get into that uh, global psoriasis atlas. Okay, that is something that we, we need to, to be getting. At. We have the resources from the International Psoriasis Council. We have GRAPA, and uh, I'll finish off, of course, finally, we have uh, um, IFPA. This is a patient association. Our chairman is a pivot of founder. He's a traveled talking about psoriasis in this country and elsewhere, and for which we are grateful. I want to thank everybody here, particularly KD uh, officials for participating in the treatment of uh, uh, patients, particularly that knowledge skill that patients are getting the right messages. Uh, let me finish there so that we can uh, have questions and discussions.